On the topic of the beefy 8S chargers, we have a new 8S charger on the market. It's the Toolkit RC M8D. For a two-channel charger, the Toolkit RC M8D is rather a chunky boy. It's roughly 13 by 10 centimeters and it weighs half a kilo. Of course, it's not as big and heavy as other chargers that you might find, but still, it's a pretty hefty device. In the front, two charging ports. In the back, the X1090, remember this is kinda important, power input and the USB-C output. And of course, do not forget about two fans located in the back for cooling of this device. When this thing is running on maximum output power of 800 watts, it can get Toasty. But probably the most distinctive feature of the M8D is that the LCD panel on the top is tiltable and it's a touch LCD. But we're gonna discuss the touch options in a few minutes. And the list of feature ends with traditional for all the Toolkit RC chargers. The roller and the back button. Now, let's turn this thing on. Like I mentioned, the M8D is equipped with X1090 plug. That means if you want to connect some thing with the XT60, well, you have to have an adapter. In the box, you will get the cable with the XT90, but the other side of the cable you will have to do by yourself. I just soldered the standard XT60 plug on the other side. I'm not really using that much of the output powers. My lipos are rather teeny tiny, not the huge ones you can charge with this thing. And I just plug it to my standard XT60 bench power supply. Once we plug the X1090, the interesting things start to happen. To First of all, it's the quite talkative charger and it will talk to you a lot while in use. It's a feature, some people like it, some people do not like it, I rather do not like it that much, but I can imagine there are situations in which the talking option is actually quite handy. However, the first thing that you will have to do after each power on, you have to choose the power input type. Depending on the type of the power supply you connect this thing, you have to just tell the charger of how much power it can pull from the X1090 so it doesn't fry the power supply connected to the other side. We will be quite conservative today and we will use the option of maximum 210 watts with the input voltage between 10 and 20 volts and the max current it pulls from the input of 5 amps. And here we can test if the touch panel actually works. It works. And if you are wondering of what this thing is, I do have to admit I kinda broke the charger and I dropped something also the just yesterday before I actually filmed this video. 100% my fault. It came without this problem on the LCD and well, I just broke it. Now, what changed in the topic of the user interface of the M8D comparing to other toolkit charger? It's the brand new user interface, touch interface, combined with the standard button and the roller option. Yes, you can change all the settings with standard roller and the button, but if you want to, you can just use touch and scroll through everything. And while we are on the settings screen, there is actually quite a lot of options you can customize your charger. This includes capacities, currents, voltages, charge settings, system settings, and of course the calibration of the balancing part. Because it's a two-channel charger, you have two duplicated sections on their screen. Left one, of course, for the left channel and the right one for the right channel. Let me connect the battery so we can see how the charging process looks with the new user interface. Battery connected. 
Like I told you, it's quite a talkative charger. Current mode of each of the channels is displayed as one of those buttons. Currently in the standby, if I click it, now I can choose the charging profile. You do not decide on the voltage, current and the type, you rather define profiles and then activate the profile to perform the action. In my case, the profile number one is the LiPo 4.2 volts charge, number of cells auto, and the max current of 3 amps. Clicking on the profile now gives me the option to modify some of the settings of it. If, for example, I want to change the battery type, end voltage, mode, or the number of battery cells, including the option to slide on the max current. By the way, it's not really that convenient to use the touch for this. It's just better to use the slider. Let's just use one amp and then after confirming the profile, I can decide to which channels this profile will be used. I have only one battery connected, so only channel number two is highlighted. If there would be something on the channel one, I would also be able to activate the channel one and hit start. And after confirmation, of course, why not? That <laughs> very talkative charger, the charging started. And here you get the basic information about the process. Current amperage, information about each of the cells, information about total input power in watts, and other standard properties of the charging process. Like many modern chargers, the M8D is also equipped with the USB-C charging. Just connect USB-C to the charger, to your phone, and the charging works. And by the way, this is the high power output up to 68 watts. In terms of battery types, there is rather standard set of available batteries. We have LiPo, we have Lithium HV, we have Lithium FE, Lithium LTO, User, Nimha, PB, UAV BAT, which is a completely special protocol. We won't be discussing this today. And something that can turn this charger into the bench power supply. The power, which basically acts as a DC output. You can specify the voltage and the max current on any of the two channels and connect XT60 to power whatever you want. And of course, in our case, for the most popular LiPo batteries, we have a few charging modes. We have charge, standard charge, we have discharge, dense charge, we have storage charge, and finally we have the option of destroy, which does exactly what you think it does. It destroys the connected LiPo when you want to utilize the battery. This is extremely important. You should never absolutely ever throw out charged LiPo batteries. Those things can be dangerous. They can ignite, they can explode, and they can cause problem. When you are throwing out your batteries, first discharge them to zero, leave them discharged to zero for a week or two, and only then move them to the specialized utilization point that accepts LiPo batteries. Everything else can be dangerous. And now it's verdict time. First of all, the charger looks good. If you have big batteries that you want to charge fast, 800 watts is your friend. And the fact that the charger is not shy on having a lot of features, for example, it can act as the bench power supply, also does not bring any problems. It's good to have more than less, at least usually. So get your beefy batteries, connect to M8D or a lot of parallel charging boards and you are golden. Plus it has the option to charge the DJI Mavic 2 batteries. I don't have them, I don't care, but if you do, it might be the option for you. But of course, I wouldn't be me if I haven't spotted a few things. Think number one. I'm not entirely sure if I like the fact that the charger is so tacative. It tells you everything. You connected battery, you disconnected battery, uh, but really, honestly, why? Yes, for example, if during charging the balancing port got disconnected, this is a huge no-no. 
charger should stop and immediately tell you about it. But if I connect the battery into the charger when the charger is not charging, I know that I did it. The charger doesn't really have to tell me about it. And I'm also not entirely sure I like the new user interface. I mean, the touch is fine. Yes, it simplifies the process. You just touch everything and it's golden. Fantastic. And the fact that it has the roller as the backup, it's also a nice touch. But I noticed this on already a few chargers. There is right now something like the tendency to have charging profiles. So if you have a lot of battery types and you do different kinds of operations of them, you have to have a lot of profiles because the settings, the current, the mode and so on are hidden as profiles. It's fine when you, for example, have only 1.5 amp hour 6S batteries and you only charge them and storage them. But if you have big, medium, small and like all those options, it's always one additional step you have to take before the process starts. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm not entirely convinced it's good either. But okay, looks like this is the current trend of designing the charger user interface. And here's the next video you should watch.